you guys would do me a favor and open your Bibles to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. We live in a dark world. And I know that is an encouraging way to start our morning out. <laughs> but it's true. We are surrounded by darkness. It's everywhere. And this darkness is a strong darkness. It's one that leads people astray. It leads people into addictions, into sexual sin. And this darkness leads people through lies and deception to their own destruction. And when I talk about destruction, I don't just mean failure in this life. I'm talking about eternal damnation. So what do we do? Everywhere we turn, we see the world's agenda. Everywhere we look, they're trying to jam it down our throats. They're trying to teach our children. They're trying to indoctrinate their way of thinking. They're trying to take them away from the word and the way God has designed things to be done. So what do we do? What do we need? We need Jesus. Amen? Jesus drives out the darkness. And for those here today who surrendered their lives to Jesus, we need to remember that God has delivered us from the power of darkness. Though we see it all around us, though we're surrounded by it, we have been delivered from the power of darkness. Would you stand with me as we read our text this morning? Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at verses 13 and 14. He, that is God, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus, thank you for this amazing truth. Thank you, God, for your deliverance, for stepping in, Lord, into our lives and calling us by name and snatching us from the fires of hell. Thank you, God, that you have placed us with your son and that we are covered by his blood and we are forgiven. We look to you this morning in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. So we as believers in this room have been delivered from the power of darkness. Now let that sink in for a moment. We have been delivered from the power of darkness. If we were delivered from the power of darkness, that means we were once held by the power of darkness. Now, I know for some in this room, that might be an easy thing to say. Let's call them group A, because group A was saved out of wickedness, out of obvious wickedness. Maybe the things that we dealt with, we saw the face of evil. It was not something... To, hard to say that we were delivered out of darkness of the power of darkness but for others in this room or watching online call them group b that might be a little more difficult to say because they might say that the things that they were delivered out of they weren't that dark but that would be a huge mistake because no matter our sin we were all in great darkness darkness that led to hell and we need to avoid, as believers, all the things and the thinking from our previous state that we were in. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? What communion has light with darkness? The problem is, I think a lot of times, some of the things that we deal with don't always look that dark. I know for me and my wife, the things that the Lord saved us out of are completely different. Some of them are similar. Some of them are completely different. But we were both delivered out of a great darkness. And God has done a great work in our lives of converting us and changing us and making us new creations. But for me, um, some of those things that the Lord saved me out of was a way in which I did uh, business. I have been in a lot of different things. I'm sure as many of you have, we've tried our hand at different things. But everything that I did was some offshoot of a type of sales. I was always in some type of a sales position. Whatever I was doing, it still ended up being some type of sales. And I was very selfish in the way that I did things. It was all about making money, getting the sale done, getting as much out of the customer as I could. 
And to give you an example, I was never a car salesman. <laughs> It's one of the things I didn't try. But as an example, if somebody walked into a car dealership and there was a husband of five and he said, I have a family of five and I need a minivan for $20,000, what I would do is I would figure out I'd get to know him. I'd get in conversation. I'd find out, does he really have 20000 or does he have 50000 and 20000 is all he wants to spend. If I get him something that seats five people, who cares if it's comfortable as long as it seats five people? If I make more money. And that's what I would do. And I was good at it. And I manipulated and I, through selfish ambition or selfish reasoning, pulled larger cells out of people. But I didn't sleep well at night. I struggled through the day. I had worldly success, but it was by worldly means and it was robbing me of life. And this happened um, probably from the time that I was an early teenager to about my mid-20s. This is how I operated in whatever business I was working in. And then God got a hold of my heart and told me that he was going to change my life. And he revealed to me that I was going to be going in a completely different direction. If you had told me back then that I would be married, you know, as when I was in my early 20s, that I was going to be married to a lady from Salt Lake, beautiful woman, have three kids, and be a pastor at a church, I would have said, you're crazy. <laughs> but God had different plans. And they weren't all revealed to me at that moment, but he did share with me, you're going a different way. I'm calling you to something different. You're not going to do things the way you've done them before. And this concerned me because I had never done anything else, and I didn't know how to provide. I didn't know how to make money in a new area, but the Lord said, lean on me, trust me, and I will provide. God opened up the opportunity for me to work for a company in a field that I had never worked in before. It was still sales, oddly enough, but it was in a field I had never worked in before. And in that field, I remember God working on my heart and changing the way I went about doing business. And I had a boss at that time. This company was kind of like the Wild West at the time that I joined the company. It's just whatever could happen in the day would happen. If you were left standing, you were left standing. You went on to the next day. And so everything was allowed basically. And they would push me to do business the way I had done business before because that's the way they did business also. And I told them, I'm not doing business that way anymore. I'm not gonna sell somebody something they don't need. I'm not gonna push somebody into something they didn't ask for. Now, if they need something and don't realize it and it'd benefit them, I'll show them. But I'm not going to go after, from my point of view, what's best for me. And he told me it might cost me my job. And I said, if it does, then it does. Let's decide this now because I'm not going to do it. He decided to let me do my thing my way. And God tremendously blessed it. Before every customer, I prayed. I went in. I listened to him like I did before. I got to know him like I did before. But this time, it was with different ears. I was seeing how can I help them? What can I do to benefit their business? What can I do to grow their business? And in time... I grew one of the largest routes in Utah in a place that was considered a dead territory. And the guys would always ask me, how are you having so much success at work? And I would say, it's the Lord blessing me. They're like, whatever, how, what are you doing? <laughs> and I would say, I'm praying and I'm working hard, but it's the Lord and I'm honoring the Lord in what I do. I no longer did business the way I did before. And because of that, I had a reputation of not being a salesman, but being more of a consultant. And people were excited to see me and they looked forward to seeing me. And I helped many of their businesses grow and I helped many of them save money. And I helped many of them make more money in their own business just by tweaking a few things here and there. And God blessed it because I did it his way. If we have been delivered from darkness and God delivered me from darkness in this area, we have no business with the old things of our previous life. We have been made new when we have been transformed from darkness to light. Peter describes us like this. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that we may proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people of God, but now are a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We were called out of darkness into his marvelous light, and we are something new. What a great gift he's given us. 
In James, he says, do not be received, my beloved brethren, for every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. He is the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow. And he has brought us into his marvelous light, that we could be a kind of first fruits of all of his creation. Guys, we are supposed to look like his best. We are supposed to shine like his best. We are supposed to act like his best. Do we understand this, church? If we do, why are we so often playing in the shadows? Why are we so often delivered from darkness and moved into his light, but then we go back? And maybe we don't jump back into the darkness, but we play in the shadows. We get as close as we can. Jesus is not there. Victory is not there. Life is not there. Obedience is not there. But sin, sin is there. We should not be living in or be around the shadows. We are not supposed to go back to the works of darkness, but to cast them off. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Why? Because he has delivered us from the power of darkness. And we haven't been delivered from the power of darkness to run back to it. To spend time in the shadows, but to run with freedom from the darkness. We are no longer slaves to sin, but are now set free to soar in our life and in the relationship we have with Jesus Christ. Paul says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, in the context of what he's writing here, it's about legalism. But it holds true for anything that held us, anything that we were bound to, any yoke that we were carrying of the enemy. Don't pick up an old yoke. Do not get entangled in sin. And how do we get entangled? By doing something we shouldn't be doing. I remember when I was a young man, I don't know, 15 years old, 16 years old maybe, I was a huge music lover, still am. Um, but I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of albums and CDs back when we had those little discs. <laughs> Still got cases of them in the garage. Can't give them away yet, even though everything's on my phone and iPad. <laughs> but I had thousands of them and albums. I was a collector. And I was kind of strict in the way I set everything up. Everything was alphabetized. Everything was in a row. Everything was neat. Everything was ch-ch-ch-ch-ch-ch. And my brother always liked to cause trouble. <laughs> He was like a little squirrel that ran around me all the time and I was trying to grab him and get him off him. I was not the older brother that chased him down. I was not the older brother that bullied him at all. We had a great relationship growing up, but he was a fireball and he was a handful. One day he wanted me to chase him and come after him, but I don't do that. I never have. So he tried to figure out a way to get me to come after him and to chase him out of the house. So he walked into my room while I was sitting there reading and he ran through my desks and my counters and my bookshelves, and he wiped everything off of them. Thousands. <sighs> Stuff just crashed on the floor. That was in alphabetical order, I might remind you. <laughs> and that did it. I jumped off that bed, and I took off after him, and I chased him down the hallway. And about four feet down the hallway, I was flat on my face because he had strung fishing wire across the bottom of the hallway. And I just went, and I, I, I looked up, and I smiled, and I'm like... This bought you a little time, but you're still going to die. 
And he's laughing, running out of the house. And I chase him out of the house. And he goes across the backyard and he grabs a rope and he swings across the backyard. And I'm like, what does he think? He's Tarzan? And I come after him and chase him down the backyard. And I fall into a hole up to my pockets, dug in the backyard. And I'm talking one of the freakiest looking things I've ever seen. But a mountain of ants came out of that hole climbing up my leg. It looked like somebody had pulled a red and black blanket over my leg. It was all ants. Freaked me out, so I jumped out and went to the next one. I fell in another hole and another hole. And as I'm walking around, I think I staggered into four or five holes. One of them was filled with barbed wire. <laughs> as he's laughing off on the other side. And the more I struggled, the more that barbed wire hooked me. And more of that barbed wire got wrapped around my leg and got my other leg. And I finally just laughed and I gave up and I said, you in and I went back inside. <laughs> And that's what I think about when I think about doing things that we shouldn't do. I knew better than to chase him. And I chased him and I ended up on my face. And then I ended up staggering around in holes wrapped up in barbed wire that I couldn't get out of. Satan does this. He messes with our life and the order and the peace in which we're trying to walk in. He baits us into responding and then we end up entangled, ensnared, in traps that he has set for us. But we don't have to bite. As believers, we are no longer under the power or the sway of darkness. So what does it mean if we find ourselves in the shadows, entangled? It means we have walked away from the place God has placed us as believers. When things get tough, we don't run back to old things, we run to God. And I say run back to God this morning because if we're in the shadows, we have left the place he has set us. Now, I'm not talking about salvation. If we have given our life to the Lord and we are saved, we are saved and we are his. What I'm talking about is being in a place of victory in our life. Because not only were we delivered, our verse tells us, from the power of darkness, but look at it again. We were also conveyed into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Once we were delivered from darkness, we weren't then dropped at the edge of darkness. It says we were conveyed, we were transported, we were carried into the kingdom of the Son of His love. We weren't even brought to the gates of His kingdom and left outside to beg to come in. No, we were brought in and not by our own strength, by walking in. We were carried into the kingdom of the son of his love so that we would be able to abide and dwell with Jesus, the light of the world. So now that we're placed in the kingdom of the son of his love, what do we do? We shine. We reflect the light of Jesus in his love in a dark, dark world. We don't rejoin the world we illuminate it by the light of Jesus. Matthew says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. But what are we showing the world? as believers that should be doing this, as believers that should be a city on a hill, as believers that should be lighting a candle in our house, a light in our house and putting it on a lampstand so that we can light the way for those around us. What are we showing the world? Are we reflecting the life-saving light of Jesus Christ? Being used by Jesus to draw people unto him, giving hope to the hopeless and life to the dying. Or do we, like, do we look like drifters in and out of the shadows, weaving in and out of darkness. If we look like the world in the way we live, the entertainment we watch, the concerts that we go to, the way we treat our spouse, the way we raise our children, the way we work, if that's the case, we aren't reflecting his light. So when we tell people to follow Jesus, and if they do, they will be set free, they don't believe us. Because they look at us, 
And they say that either we are lying or God is lying because they don't see the light in us. John writes in 1 John, this is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and have his word, excuse me, and his word is not in us. Do we understand what we're hearing, what we're hearing from John, what he is saying? If we belong to God and there is no darkness in him, if we say that we have fellowship with him, but we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. When the world sees us, they should see light. They should not see shadows. They should not see darkness. We should be radiating the light of the Lord. He continued to say, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This is what we should be proclaiming with our lives. This is what we ought to be reflecting, the light of Jesus, the light that he brings. If we're not reflecting his light, his love, then we are not offering the world any hope. Because like I said, they don't see the light in us. They see that we claim Jesus, but we don't look any different than they do. And that's because of disobedience. All the while, they are lost in darkness. And they are lost in darkness without hope. And why would they want to admit to us that they are sinners in need of a Savior if we don't look like we've been saved? No one wants to come into the light and expose their sin if there's no hope of redemption. And the sad thing is, we as a church have that hope and promise to give them. That with Jesus there is salvation and it is available to all. There is deliverance from darkness, a new foundation to live from, and forgiveness of sins through his blood. Let's look at our text again. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption, redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Since we as believers are delivered from darkness and we are transferred into a new kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, and we are now forgiven of our sins, our transgressions against God through the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to ask you this morning, why would we not stay in the light? Why in the world would we take anything less? Why would we ever want to go back to the things we used to do? Why would we want to do things that grieve God's spirit? Why would we want to remove ourselves from his blessing? Guys, as believers, sometimes we settle in and we're comfortable with the fact that we have been saved. And we might even be thankful and grateful of the things that we were saved from. But then we stay there. Nothing really changes in our marriage because we do the same things. We're saved, but we still do the same things. God has freed us from darkness, planted us in his kingdom, and forgiven us of our sins, not just so that we're saved from something, but like we've heard many times here, we're saved for something. 
I want to encourage you, anyone here today or watching online, if you are saved and you're not living the life Jesus wants you to live, if you haven't left old things behind you, repent. Repent now. Don't wait. Don't say, let me chew on this. You know if you need to repent. Do it now. Change your mind and ask God to bring you back. Submit to his will. Do the things he is calling you to do. Get serious about your faith and seek God with all that you have. Stop living a less than life. Love your spouse as the Bible teaches. Pour into your children. Be a friend that's invested. Stop looking for things or stop looking at things that are destroying your life. If you're not free to drink, throw away the alcohol that's stashed in secret places. Throw the drugs out. Turn off the TV. Stop hiding from life. Stop doom scrolling on social media. Stop living in bitterness. Stop doubting God and throw yourself at the mercy of Jesus and obey him. And you will find life like you have never experienced before. For the Lord desires to forgive and to restore. And God says in his word, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God wants to save us. And once we are saved, he wants to continue to breathe life into our lives, our marriages, our families, and our church. Jesus died for us when we were at our worst. Jesus accepted us where we were, but he doesn't want us to stay there. He wants us to grow in strength, in grace, in mercy, and in love through him. As believers, we need to remember what God has done for us. We need to start living according to the truths of what God has done for us. And we need to declare with victory to a dark world what God has done for us. And he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Will you stand with me? We're going to invite the worship team to come up. This message today is for Christians. It's for believers who have given their life to the Lord, and it's an encouragement to get serious in our walk with Jesus, to stop being satisfied with being saved from something and start living like we were saved for something. But maybe there's someone here today who hasn't surrendered to God, who is under the power of darkness, but you want desperately to be free. Maybe you're watching online. Listen. Jesus can set you free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed, and he desires to free you this morning and heal you in your life. God will deliver you from the power of darkness. He will carry you into the kingdom of the Son of his love. And Jesus will redeem you and forgive you of all of your sins. If you're in the room this morning and you desire this, raise your hand. Is there anyone in here that desires? I see your hand. Is there anyone else who desires to make the Lord Jesus Christ their savior and to have them or have him free you from the power of darkness? All right, well, pray with me, friend. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Your word tells us that you saved the lost and I am lost. I need you. Direct me, guide me, fill me with your spirit. 
Free me from the power of darkness. Free me from the things that hold me in bondage. Teach me to cling to you. I look to you this morning, and I ask you to be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jesus, thank you for bringing another saint into your kingdom. I pray, Lord, for everyone in this room and everyone watching online, Father, that we would no longer play in shadows. That we would no longer be satisfied with being saved from something, but God, we would desire to know what we were saved for. That the power of the Holy Spirit would fill their homes that, God, you would guide them and direct them by your word and by your spirit. Help us to be victors, Lord, through your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.